in our capital society, it's cheaper and quicker to conduct research if you don't have to go to the trouble of getting people's permission. Most people think that you can't be made to take an experimental medication without your permission. The law actually changed in 1996 to provide two ways that you can force people to take medications as part of a trial without giving their permission, without even informing them. It was an actual change in the law. It said if you're a trauma victim, you can be forced to take a medication as part of a trial, see whether it works or not. The second was a waiver that said in some cases you can make people take an experimental modality. And it laid out various conditions, but the conditions are only haphazardly met and sometimes not met at all. The question is, do we want to be that kind of country? There are 15 chapters in my book, Medical Apartheid, detailing the long history of abuse, neglect, and torture in the medical arena. People do tend to refer to only the Tuskegee study, a mistake on several levels. If you only refer to one study, essentially you're discounting this four centuries of medical abuse. You're implying that African Americans are overreacting. It distorts the actual nature of the wariness of African Americans, which is not paranoia, but iatrophobia, which is rooted in a very negative history. African Americans and their supporters, the Quakers and abolitionists, have long spoke about it, but I think what we're seeing now is it entering the mainstream. You're seeing people other than African Americans and civil rights leaders make the connection between civil rights issues and preserving the rights and dignity and health of African Americans in the medical arena. The history has always been there. It took someone with the courage and ability to bring it to the forefront, and people are reacting appropriately.